in a little while um, but this one is actually going to be more of a watch you watching TV slash game edition so I guess we can kind of start with TV and I'm gonna say this is mostly stuff that is coming not okay. stuff that we've been watching although we can say stuff we've been watching I have a list of mm -hmm. things that are coming in the month of January that I'm kind of excited about by the time this video comes out um, these will already be out but um, Sherlock came back yeah. So that's exciting. I love Sherlock. And also, let's talk about Downton Abbey final season also happening at uh, the beginning of January. So I haven't watched either one of those at this point. So yeah. Um, also, in the beginning of January, New Girl comes back. Oh, yeah. If you haven't been watching Superstore, you should be watching Superstore yes. because it is Super so funny. funny. If you've ever worked in customer service, retail, any type of service industry job, you have to see this show. It's now, apparently so it hasn't really like started yet, even yeah. though there were some on Hulu that you could watch. I think there might have been some on TV. They give you like a preview, but it doesn't officially start until January. Yeah. Um, it has America Ferrer from Ugly Betty, and it has that dude from Mad Men, whose name I can't remember. But anyway, it is... <laughs> It's funny. It's mm. like The Office and Parks and Rec, but I don't... While there is a certain amount of awkwardness to it, it's not as awkward. And then also, Heroes Reborn comes back. I don't know oh. if you guys have been watching that, but it comes back on uh, January 7th, and that's cool. Um, some people really don't like it, and whatever. And then, of course, the Golden Globes are on the 10th. All right, and then um, there's some interesting shows that I I know I haven't heard much about, but I'm kind of interested in it. There's one called The Colony by the makers of Lost and Carlton Cuse, and okay. um, it has the guy who plays Sawyer yeah. from Lost, and I can't remember who the girl is. Um, don't know much about it, but it looks interesting. Also, there is a show called Angie Tribeca on TBS yeah. that comes out on the 17th, and it's kind of like a parody of cop shows, mm -hmm. and they release all, like, 17 episodes all on the same day. So it runs, like, oh. marathon style, the 17th through the 18th, um, on TBS. Um, I don't know if they're planning to put it on, like, Hulu or anything like that, but... You can check that one out. Um, also, going through, uh, Agent Carter comes back on the 19th. And if you're an X-Files fan, that happens on the 24th. Um, and lastly, there are two other shows called You, Me, and the Apocalypse, which has Rob Lowe and Jenna Fisher in it. That comes at the end of the month, and it's basically what you think. It's a bunch of people that come together, and there's an apocalypse, but it's supposed to be comedy. So, um... Wasn't, wasn't there a movie, You, Me, and the End of the World? Yes, there was. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but I, a lot of times I tend to pick shows that have people I like in it mm. um, that I start watching. So I think because of Jenna Fisher and Rob Lowe, I was kind of like, yeah, I'll watch this. And then lastly, Grease Live uh, comes on at the end yeah. of the month. And uh, we're interested to see if it's going to be a train wreck or really awesome. We still haven't seen The Wiz live uh, we oh, we we slacked we'll do that eventually yeah but sure um so that's everything that's coming in mm -hmm. january what have you been that's watching uh finished jessica jones finally we, finally we we forced him we were like <laughs> we're watching this with you and so that means i watched it twice yeah I'll but it was through. worth it i loved the show uh just i loved everything about it uh, if you see before and what you're watching we started and talked about, you know, where we thought things were going to go. Mm -hmm. Some of the things we kind of called out ended up happening, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I was talking about, like, Hellcat with Trisha Walker. Um, seems like that's where we're going to go with her character. There's mm -hmm. a possibility of that. Yeah, we did cool. a makeup and a movie on it, too. So I will link yeah. that above so that you can see our makeup and a movie look. What else have you been watching? Or is that it? Because well, it's been I've, the holidays and it's hard. Yeah, uh, the only other show I finished watching was Attack on Titan. I was watching that with Marshall and Vince. Finished that series. Mm -hmm. And that was really good. I'm excited for the season two of that which I guess it's been like 23 years. Yeah. Exaggeration. Just, it's been like a while since that ended. Um, I actually watched a miniseries at the recommendation of a coworker called Childhood Childhood's uh, End on Sci-Fi. And it was a miniseries. There was only three of them. And it's based on a children's book that came out around 75, 77, right around there. Mm. Um, 
what was interesting and the reason why he recommended it was because he said that you can tell that since the book was written 40 years ago almost that the things that they have written about in the book were taken and put in other things like independence day like other sci-fi mm. movies which i could totally see um however the, the 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 story itself depressed the crap out of me and i think that the actual adaptation of it left a lot of holes and a lot of storylines that did not get explained and so i didn't really enjoy it that much like i was telling chris if you've ever seen the miniseries taken ten thousand times better than this no it's kind of been a dry season because everything goes on hiatus and yeah we don't we've been watching christmas movies yeah that's pretty much what filled up our time seinfeld time. seinfeld episode we're still going through seinfeld i saw the one with the pole festivus, festivus. which yeah i've never seen that before i knew not really anything about it and it was funny because we watched it one day and I thought she just randomly picked it. And then like the next day I saw nothing on Facebook but stuff about Festivus. And I'm like, I get it now. <laughs> I looked it up. I was like, we should watch this because Festivus is coming up. Okay. I didn't know he had never seen it. Totally it but yeah. I was like, oh, this is <laughs> totally I mean. Okay, so now that we've talked about what we're actually watching, let's talk about something that we've kind of been obsessing over a little bit lately, and that's what we're playing. Uh, Chris is a very big, like, board game fan. You would Love say you watch tabletop games, uh, that tabletop video channel tabletop, quite a lot. Yep. Uh, Will Wheaton show. Mm -hmm. yep. So for, for Christmas, he asked for some tabletop games. He gets them all the time. So we're going to talk about some of our favorites that we've been playing yeah. almost obsessively. <laughs> <laughs> well, one I got a while back, uh, not really for Christmas or anything, but I got uh, because um, a friend of mine, she got into her Kickstarter and ended up getting their stuff and I loved it. So I had to buy it myself once it became for sale. And it is the game Exploding Kittens. If you have heard of it, you might have... Um, this was a big deal on like Kickstarter for a while. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's a card game you play with your friends. It's got ridiculous stuff on them. So you got... Alright, so the different cards do different things. Like this one, it's a nope. Oh, uh, it, it's got funny stuff on it. But um, they're, they're ridiculous. And you basically try to like explode each other. Or try not to explode. You try not to get the exploding kitten. Uh -huh. um, there's two different decks though. There is a regular deck... And then this is ages seven up. And then you have the not safe for work one, NSFW, which is for ages 30 and up, question mark. It's, that's pretty much <laughs> true. Ridiculous. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, because there's stuff on there that you're like, uh, uh? Yeah. Um, but it is funny. If you're a fan of Cards Against Humanity, you're yes. probably yeah. going to like this game a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's goofy. It's it's fairly fast paced. One pace once you get in, like know how to play the game and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's a really cool one to just pull out like at a party or when a bunch of people are over, just kind of play it. Yeah. And be goofy for a little while. So yeah, there's that game. And then the big one. I've been wanting this ever since I saw it on the tabletop show. It sold out like forever when it first came out, and it took forever to get it. Mm. But yes, Dead of Winter. Amazing. Amazing. I saw it on his list and I was like, this sounds like the type of game that we should we should have. Yeah. So I bought it for him for Christmas and we've been playing it almost every other day <laughs> since Christmas. Um, I have to say it's interesting because the game is never the same because you have objectives and you have like secret objectives and you can play as a team, you can play individually. Sometimes you have a betrayer in the group. Sometimes there's a mini crisis. Actually, there's like four or five mini crises, depending yeah. on how long your game goes, uh, that you have to solve in addition to the main objective. There's zombies, there's people you have to feed, there's things you have to find. I mean, it, it sounds like it's a really complicated game, but once you've played it a couple times, it is easier and yeah. it is a lot of strategy sometimes wrench gets get thrown in your plan halfway through i would say that it's also interesting because it is kind of rpg-ish mm -hmm. because they have a ton of characters right yeah. so i would say there's like 20 to 30 characters yeah. whole, that you can lot. use yeah. yeah one of them is a dog which yes. is cool <laughs> yeah it it I, as you can tell we're, we're very excited about this game yes. <laughs> like we we play if you love you, you know, like zombies, you like tabletop games at all. RPGs, yeah, turn-based like games. You will love this game. 
But yeah, so that is Dead of Winter. Uh, you guys, this game. Yes, it's expensive. It's like $40, but aren't most games $40? Yeah, but that's like the thing that. too, is like if you think about that, a video game costs like 50, 60 bucks and mm -hmm. you get how many hours to play all this? I'd say it's almost the same kind of thing with this board game. It's You get so many hours to play out of it for that. It's a really good value. Highly recommend. If you've played this before, let us know like it was some of your favorite stuff about it, you know, or if you you know have other tabletop games like that, mm -hmm. let us know too that you like. Um, okay, next up I'm going to go that way. And Marshall's going to come in, and he's going to tell you oh. about his favorite games. All right, so we managed to pick up a few other games on Christmas, um, one of them being Munchkin, Pathfinder Deluxe. Now, I first played the original version of the game many years ago, so it was it's somewhat of a fresh start for me. Pathfinder is like D&D light mm. uh, with cards, so you build up your character to level 10, and that's the objective of the game. Uh, you do so by beating monsters and picking up items, but it's also very tongue-in-cheek and yeah, humor-based. Yeah, uh, yeah so, the cards are funny. Um, it, the deluxe versions of the game come with this game board to make it easier for you to keep track of what level your character is. Um, but it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, the game also comes with um, a die, a, a d6 die to help you do your running rolls, mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of little tiny cute figurines. It's a cute, funny game. It took us a little bit to get, uh, to get into the game uh, because we couldn't quite figure out the rules exactly. Yeah. Um, but Vincent really loved the game before, so he helped us out in learning yeah. the rules. How did you feel about the game once we started learning the rules? Once we knew how to move about and what to do with all these like different items and stuff, it was a lot of fun. It, it definitely mixes in a little bit of the like RPG, or yeah, you know, like the role-playing type of games of like mm -hmm. Pathfinder, but uh, with like a card game. But also, uh, you are not each other's friends in this game. No. No, <laughs> I mean, not at all. You can be. You could. But, uh, but then you have times where, like, one person is starting to succeed, and everybody will just dump on them. Yeah, that happened to me. <laughs> Literally. Like, uh, He's one like, all right, I'm going to go level 10. No. Vincent uh, had managed to... Uh, had noticed that I was really powerful, even though I was still relatively low level. So he was forcing me to do all the fights for him. I don't know how he kept on getting that card, uh, but then uh, I was about to get to level 10, and for that fight, everybody put all of their curses on me to make it so that the monster was too powerful for me to beat. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. So, uh, the other game that we got was Boss Monster, and Boss Monster is the inverse, uh, where you are building a dungeon for other adventurers to go through. Uh, no one plays as the adventurers, though. So whatever rooms are at the top, such as the Succubus Spa, there you go, uh, the Succubus Spa, uh, it will have a different effect on there, it'll attract different heroes in different ways, it'll do more damage to them, stuff like that. Uh, so just try and get the best combination, uh, stack up the most killed uh, heroes without getting killed yourself. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, pretty simple to start up, pretty easy to play, difficult to master if you yeah. had a really good opponent. Yeah. 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 If you like kind of being like the villain in anything when you're role playing, this game's for you. Because yeah. you get to kind of do that and make that ultimate And it's got dungeon. a really fun 8-bit game style. Like yes. all, all the graphics are like that. All the card art yeah. is like that. Okay, so uh, that's that's the two games that I got for Christmas and it was lots and lots of fun. I, I really haven't been watching a huge amount. I managed to finish one anime called Kotura-san, which had a, a disappointing ending, but it was a cute anime about a girl who can read people's minds. Um, it was also very depressing because everybody hated her for it, including her own family. Oh, that is... Like, her crazy. mother literally said to her, and this is the very beginning of the anime, I wish you were never born. Yeah. So, uh, if you like cute girl animes, um, <laughs> that, like, cutesy girl animes, check it out. Um, it's a different perspective on psychic powers. Yeah. So, yeah. give it a look. Um, and that's about it for me. All right, I'm back because we forgot... Um, we're actually doing a giveaway. Um, for this giveaway, you can choose. If you win, 
you can choose between either the regular version of Exploding Kittens or the not safe for work version of Exploding Kittens. Um, so either one of those, you get to pick one of those. The giveaway, of course, will be regular like we usually do it. You have two weeks from the time the video goes up, must be United States, must be subscribed to the channel, must be 18 or older, period, because we don't want someone under 18 wanting to get the not to go for work. Yeah. No, you have to be 18. There's no under 18, get your parents permission on this one. It's everyone has to be 18. And um, you have to follow the link below uh, to go to a widget to enter and all that jazz. Someone will be happy. <laughs> if you like kittens. There you go. Like all right, so thank you so much for watching one more time. And until next time, keep calm. Stay zany. Bye.